Great to be here today. Um, hello to my colleague, Lee Wen. We're actually in the same building. We're just in a different space at the moment. Um, we're going to be talking about something quite like quite practical, how, what student representatives look like at Flinders with a particular focus on a level of student representation that I think is quite unique to Flinders. I'm the student representation and development officer. I work within the student association. Um, Li Wen is my colleague. Um, she works as a support in a support role at um, FUSA, the Student Association, but also he was a topic rep, a student rep originally, and has sort of moved into this role, support role as well, because we, as you see, that's part of our model, is we like to um, continue to kind of build, to build the capacity of our reps to kind of invite them into the workplace, and then, you know, we get the benefit of working alongside um, former student reps as well as, co um, as colleagues, so... Um, just want to acknowledge country. We begin today by acknowledging the Ghana people um, and the, the land in which we're presenting is the Ghana land. Um, we respect their spiritual relationship with country and acknowledge Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. Um, we extend respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here and to elders past and present. So a bit of a snapshot of student representation at Flinders. So uh, we took undertook a review in, uh, of student representation back in 2017. Um, so quite a few years ago now. Um, and as you would imagine, uh, if you did a review at some of your institutions, we did find um, a fair lack of engagement and support for student reps. Um, that the kind of general thought was that students were maybe a bit apathetic and not great contributors on boards and committees, that, that maybe students had roles. Um, there was a student rep, but they didn't really turn up or they didn't really speak very much. Um, it's, I mean, of course, there were always exceptions to this, but that was sort of generally what was in place. There were positions for students on boards and committees and not really that much else going on. Um, so from that review, we produced a series of recommendations, um, looking at the structure, um, looking at support um, and training, looking at recognition opportunities and things like that, um, because it was really clear that there was, there was just the kind of very basics in place, but not much else. So we really needed to look at how we were going to improve how we did things at Flinders. And luckily there was like real enthusiasm for, for that work. Good news is since that review was conducted and the recommendations were presented, there has been quite a lot of change and significant progress within our institution. So some of the highlights um, are that that we now have a comprehensive network of more than 360 student representatives. It differs each year, but up to 400 student reps um, in place across colleges. And I should say, and I know language is different in every university. We use the language of colleges. Um, we have six colleges. So that might be what you would call a faculty. I don't know if anyone else uses colleges, but say it's a faculty. We don't have schools. So we in after that review that we did, we actually changed from faculties and schools just to six colleges. So that's what we're talking about now. So that network of reps, that doesn't include the elected student representative council. So you could add another 20 students to that number of reps. So um, as you can see, we kind of went from um, a handful of reps, maybe like a, um, they'd be under 100 um, to over 360. Um, and they're in place to directly impact the quality of teaching and learning um, and the student experience. So every university and college committee has at least two student representatives. That was also something that came out of the review that there shouldn't only ever be just one student. There often would be that lonely student that's sitting on a board and a committee. Um, but we found that it's best if there's at least two students to support each other, but also to just to share the workload. And also why not have two students? There's often like lots and lots of academics sitting around a table. So um, 
there's a, it's sort of understood now if you're going to have student involvement in a committee or board or a workshop that you have at least two and that's the very minimum I think and that often is more. Um, also following that review all reps receive training and support so a lot of the reason why we, we you know you look at why were the reps not so involved or why they were a little bit disengaged um, a lot of the time they just didn't really understand what their role was they weren't empowered to they didn't feel empowered to kind of speak up or understand that their perspective was really valued and that they um, they were equals around the table so training really helps with that um, so we have training targeted training in place for the different different types of reps across the university which we run out of the student association and we also make sure that reps are rewarded um, through our extracurricular recognition program called Horizon. Um, all students get a certificate of recognition signed by the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Students. Um, but we're also moving towards um, official recognition on transcripts, academic transcripts and things that have more currency to students as well. Um, as a whole, like student reps across the university are not paid positions, as you can understand, more than 360, <laughs> that's a lot. Student council um, do have um, some payment attached or some sort of rec honorarium. Um, it's not a, a, an hourly pay or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we also sort of talk to reps about how the experience that they're getting from being a representative is valuable in itself as well. So those relationships that they build particularly have some currency. Um, but yeah, rec reward and recognition is really, really important. So I think there has been a general culture change around listening and responding to students at the within the university. Um, and it's, it's sort of routine for students now to be involved in reviews, planning, decision-making, all that type of thing as well. There's always room for improvement though. So that's sort of a snapshot of where we're at at the university. This is quite an ugly chart, but I'm sorry, <laughs> I couldn't go to our poor overworked media team at the moment and ask them to make it look prettier. So this is what it is, um, but it might, it's something I can speak to at least. Um, so there are multiple channels and opportunities that exist for students to engage in governance and decision-making within the university. Um, and, th and this is one particular way. So this is thinking about where um, those boards and committees exist um, and where and how students can be involved. So there's a very traditional model of student representation, I understand, but I think there's still a place for it in our universities. Um, so we have in, um, student representation at both topic level and course level. We don't have topic reps across the university. Um, one unique feature of our university is just how unique and each of the colleges are in the way that they want to do things. I think we will be moving towards more of a consistent model, but the way things have um, been set up here is that each college does things slightly differently to kind of meet their own needs and to fit in with sort of what works best for them, that particular college. So at some, um, within one college, there's topic representatives across the entire college. When I say topic, again, it's a language issue. Um, I mean class or unit or it's like that subject level. So the very subject, so students might be studying say four subjects per semester. I'm talking about every single topic. So it's the lowest level of um, sort of structure within the university. Um, that's quite unique. I understand it's not in places like New Zealand where class level representation is fairly standard. And that's sort of where um, we picked up the idea from. So we have reps at topic level, um, but then there's also course reps in some colleges. They, they meet with course coordinators, topic level reps meet with topic coordinators. They then report up to, a, or they participate in a student advisory committee, which hopefully then sends a report up to the college education committee, which is sort of highest level learning and teaching um, board in a college, which then moves up to university level committees, education quality, academic senate and university council where there's student representation as well. There are other ways as well for students to participate in, in decision making and governance at the university, but this is what we're focusing on particularly today.
So I'm going to um, talk specifically about topic reps because I think that's quite unique and something that I think you might all be interested in. Um, the main role of a topic representative is to provide an opportunity for, for staff to work closely with students who are experiencing their topic in real time. Um, and it's an opportunity to be responsive, responsive to small changes that can be made to improve the student experience. Um, and also hopefully the experience of academics too. Um, and also inspire maybe some f um, future changes, some bigger changes further down the track. So it's quite a low level kind of um, small issue discussion, but it's it's in the place where students, I think, find a lot of meaning or it really impacts them. So if their assessments are confusing or there's something to do with the way, the pace in which the, the information's been provided to them in lectures or anything to do or any skill that they haven't developed or any question that they have about a topic, um, the topic rep is there to have that conversation with topic coordinators about um, you know, what the students are thinking. So it gives voice, I guess, in that way to that quiet student body. Uh, it, topic reps are also encouraged to be reflective of their own experience as a learner, but it's also really clear that we make it also really clear in training that they're not there just to represent their own views, they're there to canvas the views of the wider student body as well. So I, I see it as a very kind of grassroots level of student voice. Um, enabling students to have an impact on direct on their direct learning experience. We do see students as experts in their own learning um, and providing a really invaluable experience. So the idea is that the student views in dialogue with staff will improve the learning experience. I'm going to move on so Lee Wen can have um, a chat. <laughs> One second, I'm just going to share this quote. Um, from an academic staff member about just gives you a bit of a reflection on what academics what academics might think of the being part of topic rep program at Flinders so um, this academic is talking about it being a good opportunity for staff and students to have a dialogue and I think um, having that formal role for a topic rep to have that conversation and to discuss issues that maybe other um, that the student body is raising is really important because often there might be that kind of quiet rumbling or it could just be radio silence for that academic. Um, but there are actually issues having this connection point to a rep to have that conversation, I think formalizes it and, and um, really helps to have that conversation because I think it really it, it, it goes some way to equalizing some of that power dynamic as well because the rep has an official role to play um, and they and students have indicated that that has made a, a, a big difference so yeah it's all it's all about giving staff a better understanding of the student perspective and what isn't isn't working so I'm going to hand over to Lee Wen to talk about a day in the life of a topic rep Hello, I'm Lee Wen. Uh, let me share my personal experience of being a topic representative here at Flinders. And Kate has full control of the slide. <laughs> yes, thanks, Kate. Um, so I became a topic representative here at Flinders for a second year biology topic in 2020. That's when the topic coordinator sent out an email asking if there's anyone willing to put their hand up to be the topic representative for the topic. I did, and I was successful. And I thought it was a great, it's gonna be a great opportunity for me to, um, to build a good relationship, um, just for some personal growth as well. And it was a really big cohort. We had about over 250 students in that topic. And we had four topic representatives uh, for the cohort in general, um, as Kate mentioned, we normally recommend have two uh, representative for each topic, but for a topic that's that size, larger than um, over uh, 100 students, we have extra topic representatives uh, for the topic. So um, we believe that students work better together with their peers, and I certainly feel that way. Uh, all of us work really close together with um, the topic coordinator. We work as a, a bridge, um, between the, the silent student body and the topic coordinator. We're there to enhance the voice in the silent student body. And here are my duties and the responsibilities. And the first of all, 
of, of, of course, I need to make self, myself known to the class. I just stood in front of class and introduced myself um, to everyone here. I'm the channel. I'm someone um, you can talk to if you think there's any issues in the class. And my major duty or responsibility of this role is to gather student opinions of their views of their learning experience in the classroom. So by doing that, we um, generally just have a general chat, um, have a casual conversation. We believe that's a good, great start to gather student views. We will have a general chat just before or after class and see how they're going. Um, just before the mid-semester break, we did a mid-semester checkpoint. Uh, we did as a post-note survey. Um, so in person, we did have that privilege to do such thing in person in that year. Um, so we sent out posting note in the classroom and asked them, is there anything you are really happy with the class? Um, is there anything you think we need to improve on? And what are your expectations for us as a topic representative? And then we collect notes, we filter through them, and we organize the meeting with the teaching staff. We go through the student opinions and we figure, uh, we pick out the issues and then trying to implement some solutions and we figure out some strategies um, to go through those issues. Apart from that meeting, we also organized regular meetings with teaching staff as well. For us, it was um, a 30 minutes meeting every fortnightly, just to reflect on what's going on in the classroom, what is working, what is not. So they have a good idea of what, what's going on in the classroom. As Kate mentioned before, we are the expert in our learning experience. We know what's going on in the classroom a lot better. So being this um, topic representative here at Flinders, um, obviously it's a highlight of my um, life at Flinders. Uh, at the end of the semester, uh, we got told the student satisfaction rate went up to 33%, uh, um, went up, sorry, went up to 73% uh, from 56% of from previous year. So that was a big jump, there was a big improvement of student satisfaction rate. And we were so proud that we were part of that. And what we did to actually improve that student learning experience and it's showed in hard data. And for me personally, I've gained so much skills, leadership skills, communication skills and negotiation skills as well. And I built some really beautiful relationships with a teaching staff, as well as my uh, cohort. I talked to so many students that some of them are not, um, that are not in my normal social group and I built some beautiful friendship just by doing this role. And obviously it's not just all our rainbows and unicorns there. And there are always challenges um, that are coming with this role. Um, one of the challenges we're facing are the communication challenges. And then sometimes the student will bring up the issue that is um, way beyond the teaching staff's control. So that there are times that we, we, we couldn't fix the problem. And between four of us, um, of this topic representatives, we don't always agree on the same thing, but that's okay. Uh, challenges is where collaborations and the growth happen. We'll always work through our challenges and find improvement through the program. Um, and this is definitely, I had a really great experience being the topic representative. And are you great to see that I'm not the only one that enjoyed being a topic representative. And there, um, here's a reflection from a different topic rep. Oh, here's my little unicorn there. Oh, I, was, I was waiting for my unicorn to show up. Okay. Um, yeah, so here is a reflection from another topic representative. And obviously is reflected that was an extremely rewarding experience for this topic rep as well. And something I want to mention here as well, and it mentioned um, student um, being able to work together with, uh, to provide my cohort a fair, you call it a student oriented experience has changed the way I view the hierarchy we have at a university. That's how I felt as well. I really felt that being a topic representative in the classroom 
empower the student, really give that ownership um, to the student. So we own the topic as well and not just the teaching staff. We work together with the teaching staff, really empowered um, us as a student. And we know that we can make changes for the future cohort as well. As I keep emphasizing, that it was a really great experience for me to be a topic representative here at Flinders. And luckily for me, my involvement in this program didn't end there when the topic finished. Uh, FUSA was recruiting a new um, topic representative trainer and I was successful. So I got offered um, to join in this train the trainer program. It was a great opportunity for a previous topic rep to become a trainer. And I was uh, offered this really great training program to get to learn how this program developed, why we run the training sessions in a certain way. And I was, I was well supported in my role as well. Once I finished the train the trainer program, um, they sat with me, watched me to run the training session um, before I can, uh, I feel ready to spread the wings and then to do this on my own. Um, I always mention that to the student in the class, in the train during the training session, that I am a current student and I was a previous topic reps. I'm here to share my experiences and challenges. And I'm here to help you develop some strategies and hopefully um, it will be helpful for you to use uh, in your topic environment as well. And I feel uh, through that, I'm really connected with new topic representatives just by sharing my previous experiences. And I will, I will be able to support them throughout the semester. And, it's, and this is also a paid position. I get paid to join the Train the Trainer pro, uh, program. I get paid to prepare the training session, of course, to run the training session as well, which, also, which is really awesome because I don't have to choose what to do with my spare time between doing something I'm so passionate about or some other paid works. So overall is overwhelmingly positive experience um, being involved in this topic representation program here at Flinders and I'm still enjoying this every day. And now I'm gonna pass on to Kate and talk about our challenges and opportunities within the program. Thanks Leeman, it's a privilege to be working with you. Um, I note that we don't have too much time and there were also some questions in the chat or some conversation in the chat. So I'm gonna run through these challenges and maybe we can quickly um, respond to some of those questions that have come up. So, you know, of course, scaling up training and support is um, a big challenge when you're talking about topic level representation. I don't have the sense that this is going to um, roll out across a university, but I think that might be a chance to reflect quite soon. There's been changes in leadership and this program's been running for a while. I think there might be a chance to reflect on maybe um, focusing topic level representation at first year potentially and then embedding it with course level representation as well because they are different roles. Um, assisting reps to communicate and connect with their cohort. I know that there was a question there about how do we, you know, do reps report what they're sharing with topic coordinators. They should be. We, um, we ask them to do that in the training, that they should be closing that feedback loop and reporting on what they've um, discussed. So there should be, um, it, through the learning platform, a report back to say, this is the sorts of things we discussed and, and this is what the response was from the topic coordinator. So we do ask them to do that. Um, but there's more work we can definitely do there. I think it, 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 I think when we're talking about student reps in general, it's always a challenge to, to, to um, help them assist in how to, how to really connect in with their cohort and really hear the, the views of students. Um, promoting and recognising the works that reps do so that students know that they have reps and that they can become a rep and that, you know, this is the impact of having reps. That's all very important work that we continuously need to improve. Um, but also build, uh, something important as well as building the capacity of academic staff to work collaboratively with reps. If an academic is um, pushed for time or disinterested or unsure about what their role is, they'll pretty quickly disengage and it's very hard for the student rep to have 
um, much impact there. So we do to need to do more work around communicating with academics as well around the value of, of working with reps um, and what the benefit is for them. Um, I should also, I just want to add as well, like um, student representation, sort of student voice work in Australia has tradition, traditionally been tied to broad concepts of governance measured in terms of student satisfaction and quality outcomes. The limitations um, with this approach is that it's too focused on the end point of the student experience as opposed to building formative communities that seek to develop students as stakeholders, leaders and citizens. So the shift in conversation which is beginning to happen reflects a broader and deeper understanding of student representation that offers genuine and meaningful engagement for, du for the duration of students' time at our institution. So we are definitely looking at students from that perspective as well, the student voice from that perspective as well, which ties in really nicely to a lot of the conversations that we've been having um, during these last couple of days as well. There's a few questions in the chat. I'm gonna go back to the start. Um, Did you want to read them out to you, Kay? Yeah, you can help me. Yeah, so the very first question was, are issues raised by topic reps reported up to ensure transparency? Yeah, so like I said, we do um, expect that reps are reporting back on conversations and they will, and the good ones will do that. With this many student reps in place in topics, we can't always guarantee that they're going to do the most fantastic job. Um, on the whole, I think we do have a really positive experience, but we allow for that sort of for reps sometimes not being as good as you might want them to be because next semester is another semester and hopefully there'll be a, a, a new group coming through um, and I think there's an understanding that, that there will be that um, variability at times but um, it is yeah we do expect that a rep would be um, reporting back to their cohort. Thank you for that. Um, the next question is, is there any feedback mechanism or loop for students who have provided the insights or feedback to the topic rep? I think that's what we just talked about, yeah. yeah. Um, so we ask student reps to communicate using their online learning platform. So it's called Flinders Learning Online here. So there's um, functions to have chats and to report back and to ask questions through that mechanism. Oh, okay. okay. Louise said, I was thinking transparency so you can see if issues are adequately addressed. Yeah. Yep, there's definitely topic coordinators who are less than enthusiastic, but we push on regardless. <laughs> and that's the nature of this work, I think. And the last question in the chat is, would you say that student voice is becoming embedded through the topic rep scheme as the way things are done, or is it still reliant on champions? Um, I see it. It says a long term. Well, Lee Wen, what do you think? Do you think, at least in your in science engineering in the college, what do you think that that is? It's how we do things, or do you think there's still some challenges there? Um, I think uh, with the most of the uh, teaching staff I work with, and the are very supportive of this program, they think this is just the way it's supposed to be done. But obviously, not for everyone. They, yeah, um, that's still challenges for everyone to recognize this program for we just thinking that's still, we still just, re I see you said rely on champions. Yeah. I, I love champions. I'm happy to rely on champions. I think this is long term, messy work um, that um, we put these structures in place, we give things a go, and we I think we just need to be open to reassessing, reevaluating, and saying, okay, let's try something new. Um, but I think as long as that student voice and we're getting is there and we're getting the message out that what you have to contribute is important um, and that you do you can impact um, at your during your time at university, um, I think that's the main thing. So it is continuously a work in progress here. <music> Thank you.